안녕하세요. 서울대학교 보람의 병원 이호입니다. Greetings. I'm Professor Yi Ho of Seoul University b o r a m e Medical Center. Today I'm going to talk about the open membrane technique. Open membrane technique refers to a procedure where suture is done with a partially exposed membrane. Wide area may be exposed and in other times there can be small exposure. Regardless, open membrane technique refers to a situation where primary enclosure is not fully done and the membrane is partially exposed. We need to stick to four main principles in order to have successful GBR. This principle is referred to as PASS principle. P stands for primary closure. This refers to tension-free wound closure. A comes from angiogenesis, or adequate blood supply. S comes from space maintenance. There needs to be space for proliferation of bone-forming cell. The precondition is that the epithelial cell and connective tissue should be excluded. The last S stands for stability. Marginal sealing of wound, implant, and barrier membrane should be achieved. The PASS principle needs to be abided in order to achieve successful GBR. In regards to open membrane technique, the problem here is primary closure, especially in the case of immediate implant placement after extraction. In order to get the primary closure, significant releasing incision is necessary, and when we do this, there's loss of attached gingiva. If it is a critical case, we may overlook this downside and achieve primary closure. In which cases should we attempt the open membrane technique? All GBR is very important and difficult. We can largely divide defect into two types, a self-contained defect where GBR is more fairly easy and non-self-contained defect where it is harder to do GBR. When using open membrane technique, the recommendation is to use it in self-contained defect rather than non-self-contained defect. With open membrane technique, we can override what was considered downside of the need to achieve primary closure and preserve attached gingiva in a more easier way. This holds quite a lot of significance in the anterior aesthetic zone. The patient is an 18-year-old female patient. The patient was healthy. You can see that there are issues with the teeth number 11 and 21. Two teeth were extracted and implants were placed. Especially in number 21, immediate implant placement was performed. In the desired position, implant was placed, graft was done, and open membrane technique was used, and suture was done. You can see that part of membrane is exposed, the reason being the defect was a self-contained defect or an extraction socket. It fell into the indication category, therefore releasing incision was not made, and we did not need to lose attached gingiva. I was able to proceed surgery in a very simple manner. In post-op two weeks, a temporary provisional was provided, and we went through three months of gingival molding process, and final prostate was delivered. This is post of four years and aesthetically pleasing results were achieved, especially in the case of anterior aesthetic zone. If there is a self-contained defect, open membrane technique can be very useful. Next, I'm going to talk about what kind of membrane to use for open membrane technique. When the amount of exposure is not significant, it doesn't really matter what kind of membrane you use. 
A lot of membranes that are available in the market today are of certain quality and it doesn't really matter. However, if the amount of exposure is significant, my recommendation is for you to use a dense PTFE membrane. Dense PTFE membrane is a non-resorbable membrane with a very small pore size of less than 0.3 millimeter. This is significant considering that existing Gore-Tex membrane's pore size is 4 micrometers. This is a membrane that is fairly safer from infection despite exposure considering the fact that the size of oral bacteria is between 2 to 5 micrometers. There's a caution we need to take when using dense PTFE membrane. If the non-resorbable membrane is left exposed, unlike resorbable membrane, the extent of exposure continues to increase. So we do not leave it completely unattended for several months waiting for the bone to be consolidated completely. The membrane is removed after 6 to 8 weeks. Once removed, you will not see bone particles, but you can observe a consolidated layer of osteoid tissue. Let's look at patient case. This is a 45-year-old male patient, healthy. In number 15, there is retained root, and below that, there is sizable cystic lesion. Extraction was performed. Cystic lesion was removed. In such significant defect, graft was performed. In this case, dense PTFE membrane, which was mentioned earlier, was applied, and the surgery was closed off using open membrane technique. This is post up three weeks. You can see exposure has widened. This is the tendency of healing if you use dense PTFE. You do not leave it unattended, but as mentioned, at post-op six weeks, if you remove it, you can see that there is consolidated osteoid tissue that is not fully mature. Healing was done like this. This is before extraction and cyst removal, and this is after bone grafting. And this is after prosthesis delivery. Implant placement was done six months after bone grafting. This is a different case. This is a 57-year-old female patient. The patient was fairly healthy. It's not clear in panoramic image. But in number 16 and 27, there were secondary carriers. And in number 16 and the periapical side, there is clear lesion that can be observed. This is surgical video. Extractions were performed in number 16 and 26, and if possible, immediate placement was attempted when flap was reflected in the buccal root side, fenestration defect was observed. In order to do a traumatic extraction as much as possible, root sectioning was done. But in this way, bone defect remained. The overall form itself is self-contained defect. So, immediate implant placement with open membrane technique was used. Because there was lack of ridge height, the cast technique was also used. It would have been good if hydraulic lift were visible, but the tendency of defect did not allow it. Sealed environment could not be formed even when hydraulic lifter was applied. As a result, the sinus crystal approach using osteotome technique was performed. Implant was placed. Antagonist relations were considered. In this case, you need to be very careful about implant placement depths. 
implant is placed the one to two millimeter subcrestally compared with bone, but compared with soft tissue, it is not sufficiently deeply placed, so there's lack of biologic width, and there were problems associated with it. I'm going to show you a video clip. An implant was placed like this, grafting was done, dense PTFE membrane was not used. General collagen membrane was attached to the healing abutment and it was applied. Because it was an immediate implant placement case, as you can see, inevitably there was a certain level of membrane exposure. However, releasing incision was not made, so we did not lose any attached gingiva. I tried hard to minimize the extent of exposure using suture, and on the other side, the immediate placement was done in the same manner. Grafting was done, collagen membrane was used, and open membrane technique was also used there. After suture was complete, this is the extent of exposure. Releasing incision was not made, so there was no loss of attached gingiva. In this state, suture is done once or twice more, so I try to reduce the extent of exposure. Because it is open membrane technique, you may think that it doesn't really matter if it's open. We need to try to reduce the amount of exposure for overall prognosis. I try to avoid tension. I did tension-free suture to reduce the extent of exposure. In number 16, in the same way, I try to reduce the amount of exposure as much as possible and completed surgery. This is panoramic image after implant placement. This is two-year post-op as shown on this image in number 26 looks okay, but in number 16, there's about one to two millimeters of crystal bone loss. Bone loss occurred because of lack of biological width. That is my assumption. Fortunately, if you look at four years post-op, the bone level is maintained in a way that is not significantly different from two years post-op image. This is clinical image, and the patient did not experience major symptoms, so we're continuously doing follow-up. Now I'm going to summarize what I've addressed. Let's look at indications of open membrane technique. In the case of self contained a defect, and in the case where anterior aesthetics are important, you can use this technique. In the case where the amount of exposure is significant, dense PTFE membrane is recommended. This is what I've prepared thus far, and if you're interested in more in-depth knowledge and practical hands-on practice, Please refer to offline master course. I look forward to your keen interest. Thank you for your attention.